Hi everybody. Welcome to Ordinary Differential Equations, the mathematical framework and tools for understanding, modeling, and predicting anything that moves. Welcome back. We're going to begin Chapter 8 now, which will be our study of bifurcation of equilibrium points of autonomous vector fields. I'm going to consider a series of examples to start out in this chapter, and then once we get through with them, we'll look at what the commonalities are and how they would be generalized to a general theory of bifurcation of equilibrium. So the first example is a saddle node bifurcation. So we have a nonlinear autonomous vector field on the plane x dot equals mu minus x squared, y dot equals minus y. We want to compute the equilibrium points, so y has to be 0 for any equilibrium point. And we see that there are two equilibrium points for mu positive, no equilibrium points for mu negative, and a single equilibrium point for mu equals 0. And these continuously vary with mu. We can compute their linearized stability by looking at the Jacobian of the vector field evaluated at each equilibrium point. And we see that this equilibrium point is a hyperbolic sink. It's asymptotically stable for mu greater than zero. And the other equilibrium point is a hyperbolic saddle point for mu greater than zero. At mu equals zero, they coalesce into a non-hyperbolic point. You can see the eigenvalues at mu equals 0 are 0 minus 1, so we have a single 0 eigenvalue. Now, we can get an idea of what happens for all of the equilibrium points as a function of the parameter mu by plotting a bifurcation diagram. Now, this example is chosen so that you can actually do this and understand it. To plot a planar bifurcation diagram, that is with a single parameter and a single phase space variable, is, is an art form to get in interesting information for, from higher dimensional systems, but we're not going to worry too much about that right now. So we plot horizontally the bifurcation parameter mu, or the parameter mu, Calling it a bifurcation parameter is a bit preliminary. And the vertical axis is the single coordinate of the phase space, which captures the bifurcation. And when we learn center manifold theory in chapter 10, you'll learn a wonderful way of doing that in much more generality. OK, now in this diagram, you see the, the uh, this parabola of equilibria. The solid branch corresponds to stable equilibria. The dashed branch, unstable equilibria. And you can see that as mu goes to zero, they coalesce. And for mu less than zero, there are no equilibria. Now this illustrates just how dramatic the saddle node bifurcation can be in an application. So Suppose you're cis, you have a system for a value of mu positive, and you choose initial conditions so that uh, you're above the lower unstable branch. Then all initial conditions of that type, the trajectories through them, will evolve to the asymptotically stable equilibrium point. If you happen to be below that equilibrium point, you will run off to minus infinity. So, but that's fine. You know what your stable branch is. But as you decrease mu, what happens? Danger awaits because this unstable equilibria collides with the stable one at mu equals zero and causes it to disappear from mu less than zero. Let's see what that means exactly. It causes it to disappear. And then from mu less than zero, there are no stable equilibria. Whatever initial condition you pick, you run off to minus infinity. OK, and you can verify that very easily from the 
one-dimensional x component of the vector field. Now you can plot the phase, the, the uh, phase space, the trajectories, typical trajectories, in the xy plane for the three distinct values of mu, mu less than zero, no equilibria, mu greater than zero, two equilibria, and mu equals zero, one equilibria. It's a good exercise to check this and do this and make sure the arrows are denoting the correct sense of evolution. Okay. So the key characteristic of the saddle node bifurcation is the following. As the parameter mu is varied, the number of equilibria change from zero to two. The change occurs at a particular value parameter mu equals zero, which is a non-hyperbolic equilibrium point. And in that case, you go from zero to one non-hyperbolic to two hyperbolic. We call mu the bifurcation parameter, and mu equals zero is called the bifurcation point. All right, that's enough for this example of the saddle node. We have two more examples to look at. So next time I'll pick up with the next example, the transcritical bifurcation. So bye for now.